Welcome again. Right now in our readings, we are at John chapter 1, verses 19 through 28. We're going to be talking in depth about the person of John the Baptist. Now, don't miss this. Listen to this uh, entire teaching because I guarantee there's going to be things that we're going to be talking about here that you've never heard anywhere else and probably things you've never even thought about, okay? Let's get into this. I'm going to read the whole thing through and then I'm going to uh, talk about it in detail. Verse 19. This is John's testimony. When the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who are you? He declared and didn't deny, but he declared, I am not the Messiah. I am not the Christ. I am not Mashiach. They asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? The prophet, meaning the prophet that is prophesied by Moshe, Moses, actually the prophet speaking about Jesus, okay? He answered, no. They said, therefore, to him, who are you? Give us an answer to take back to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. This is quoting Yeshua, that's Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3, as Isaiah the prophet said. The ones who had been sent were from the Pharisees. They asked him, Why then do you baptize, if you are not the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water, but among you stands one whom you don't know. He is the one who comes after me, who is preferred before me, whose sandal strap I'm not worthy to loosen. I'm not even worthy to untie his shoes. Verse 28. These things were done in Bethany beyond the Jordan where John was baptizing. Now, I want to bring to your attention. There's, a, there's something going on here that you must understand. Okay, Every man of God, okay, when they come... They're, they don't come with perfection in the eyes of men, okay? John the Baptist here said specifically that he is not Elijah, okay? Now let's go over to Matthew chapter 11, verse 7. As these went their way, Jesus began to say to the multitudes concerning John, this is concerning John the Baptist, What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? But what did you go out to see? A man in soft clothing? Oh, like dressed beautifully? Behold, those who wear soft clothing are in king's houses. But why did you go out? To see a prophet? Yes, I tell you, and much more than a prophet. For this is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. This is found in Malachi chapter 3, verse 1. Malachi chapter 3, verse 1. Most certainly I tell you, among those who are born of women, there has not arisen anyone greater than John the Baptist. Think about that. Think about all the ones. Think about every man who has been born of a woman. Jesus said, there has not arisen anyone greater than John the Baptist. What a statement that is. What a statement that is. Think about it. Here's a guy who wasn't dressed very, uh, you know, kingly at all, not a royal apparel, not good clothing. And he was out there eating locusts and honey. And, uh, and he was out there calling people to repent, calling out their sin, rebuking them of their sin, rebuking them, uh, rebuking them of their hypocrisy, calling them brood of vipers. And Jesus said that there hasn't been a man ever born of women greater than John the Baptist. What a statement that is. Think about it. You think about all these people on TV now, these preachers on TV that want to look so great, you know, they on their websites, they got some 
pretty marvelous poses they have and how they try to be so great and how they've duped a lot of people into thinking they are. But here's John the Baptist dressed very rugged, speaking very, very roughly, actually, rebuking people of their sin. This is like probably even rougher than a lot of the street preachers you, you see today. A lot rougher than just standing there holding a, repent, say, uh, holding a sign saying repent or burn. You know, turn or burn, repent, or you're going to go to hell. John the Baptist called people the family of Satan, more or less, saying that you're a brood of vipers. You are the children of snakes. Jesus said there's no man greater than John the Baptist in his eyes. But let's look at the last half of verse 11 there. Jesus said, yet he who is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. That means that you have to humble yourself. If you're least, meaning you are, you, you don't take a high, great position, place. You take a low position. There's a lot of people dressing marvelously today. You know, keeping up to fashion, both men and women. John the Baptist didn't do that. He humbled himself to dress in camel hair. <laughs> okay? Think about how he looked. You know, standing in the River Jordan. You know, honey, locusts eating him. Calling people sinners. He, he said to people, who warned you of the, of the wrath to come? To a certain group of people. Who warned you of the wrath to come? In other words, you're not even worthy to hear the message of repentance. Shocking, isn't it? Jesus said, among those who are born of women, there has not arisen a man greater than John the Baptist. Jesus didn't praise the local Christian celebrity. He praised John the Baptist. Verse 12, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffers violence and the violent take it by force. In other words, you have to be determined. You have to press in. You have to fight. You have to strive, as it says in the scripture, strive to enter his rest. Verse 13, for all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. If you are willing to receive it, this is Elijah who is to come. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. This is my point. Okay. John the Baptist said, I'm not Elijah. Think about it for a second. Jesus said he is Elijah. Why did John the Baptist say he's not? Did he not want to draw attention to himself? Did he not want to... You know, brag? Did he honestly believe that he wasn't? He probably honestly believed he wasn't. I mean, uh, you know, he wasn't perfect in every single aspect of his life, okay? He wasn't sinning. He was not sinning. He was perfect according to the law of God. But he wasn't perfect in the eyes of men. You know, think about it. John the Baptist, at one point in time, he wondered if Jesus was even the Messiah. Are you the one that's to come or not? I just introduced you to the world as the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. By the way, takes away the sin of, sin of the world, not excuses it, not overlooks it, but takes it away. In other words, I used to sin, but now I don't anymore. Jesus took my sin away. I used to smoke. I used to be an alcoholic. Don't anymore. Jesus took that away. I used to be a compulsive thief or a compulsive liar. Don't anymore. Jesus took that away. I used to sin, but not anymore. The Lamb of God has taken away my sin. But John the Baptist here, he said he's not Elijah. Jesus said he is. You got to think about this for a minute. Just because a man of God 
misses it on a few things. I mean, sometimes it might be serious things. Like even John the Baptist wondered, are you the Messiah <laughs> or not? You think about it today, any, any Christian that would get up in the pulpit or any preacher that would get up in a pulpit saying, you know, we, we need to pray here and ask Jesus if he was really the Messiah. A lot of Christians would be just up in arms, okay? But don't throw out the baby with the bathwater. Maybe John didn't see certain things. So, yes, it is possible to miss it on certain things, but be right dead on in other things, okay? Even though John said that he's not Elijah, even though he questioned whether Jesus was the one to come, even still, Jesus said, there's nobody that came that was born of women that's greater than John the Baptist. Why? Because he preached righteousness. He preached repentance. That's the heart of God. That's where it's all at. Okay? So I just want to leave you with that. I want to leave you with that. Don't forget, if you got any questions or comments, don't, don't, uh, don't hesitate to submit them. And don't forget to check back for more teachings as we go through the scriptures step by step. And we're going to learn things that we've never saw before ever. Okay? And you will be blessed. Seek him and you will find him if you seek him with all your heart. Call upon him and he will show you great and mighty things. And may that scripture be, be fulfilled in your life. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. Thank you.